What's up, pizza dogs? It's your pal, Z Reezy here, and welcome to my very first beginner-friendly Let's Play series for City Skylines. Today, we're diving into the thrilling world of Vanilla Vista on the mesmerizing map of Mountain Taper. This map comes from the first content creator map pack by Sanctum Gamer. I find this map to be absolutely incredible in terms of options of what you can do, and it's also great for people just starting out. In this brand new series, we're going to embark on an epic adventure together as we shape and craft our very own city. We're going to be playing in a vanilla style, which means we won't be using any gameplay altering mods. This ensures that both PC and console players can follow along without worrying about any mod compatibility. However, do note, I am using some visual mods to enhance the graphics and create a more immersive experience for the series. These visual mods are purely cosmetic and do not affect any gameplay mechanics. I'm also gonna be utilizing all the various DLC and some content creator packs, which I will try my best to call out when used. So whether you're a seasoned city builder or new to the game, this series is made to be very beginner friendly and designed to guide you step by step as we unleash our creativity and witness the birth of a remarkable city. And before we dive in, I want to give a special shout out to our series sponsor, Xbox PC Game Pass, where you can play hundreds of high quality PC games like City Skylines and even day one titles. With games added all the time, you will always have something new to play. Check out PC Game Pass with the link provided in the description. Now, let's embark on this beginner-friendly playthrough and get ready for an incredible journey filled with excitement, challenges, and plenty of city-building fun. Welcome to episode one of Vanilla Vista. Here we are at our starting tile in Vanilla Vista. I want to go over first the milestones. So in the bottom left, there's going to be a little icon here. If you click that, you can start to see your milestones. So this, after you reach certain population milestones, you'll be able to unlock new features, new services, new buildings, new types of roads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically, it's the way the game kind of does a tutorial on slowly introducing you to more and more advanced features throughout the game. The goal for this video will be to get to Boomtown, which is 2600 population. We'll see how far we can get. Can't make any promises, but we'll try our best to get there. Uh, I feel like that's where the game really starts to open up. At that point, you kind of have uh, lots of road types. Uh, you start to unlock a little bit more features. I would say our, our stretch goal will be Boomtown. If we get to Tiny Town, I'll be happy. Tiny Town is definitely where things unlock as far as uh, parks and kind of start to do some detailing. You kind of start to get the trees, landscaping, etc. So that's kind of our, our biggest milestone for sure early on. But you'll kind of unlock a few early on. Uh, here with Little Hamlet and Worthy Village. But you can always go there to see your various milestones as you play and see what's unlocked. Do note though, there are vanilla mods baked into the game. If you ever wanna play and just wanna have everything unlocked by default, you can always do that and skip the, the milestone progress. You can just have everything unlocked right away. I often play that way in cities that I build, but for the purposes of this and beginner friendly, we're gonna, we're gonna do it completely vanilla and unlock everything as we go. That way I can also kind of teach you the aspects of different services and features as we unlock them. I think that'll be a lot easier, less complicated. So here is our starting tile. Basically it's where we start in the region. If we zoom out here, um, you can kind of see the whole map, but this is our starting tile where we get to start to build our city. Um, as we unlock those milestones, if you click this bottom left in areas, you can kind of see um, there'll be purchasable tiles around this one as you progress and are able to purchase them. So for a cost, you can buy um, another square here, another square there, etc. Um, you always have to have one that touches the last square, though you can't just buy another square off in the distance over here. You have to kind of make your way over there. But for us, um, and also worth noting that on the remastered version of the game, you get 25 tiles. Um, we can get 25 tiles here on the PC version as well. But if you're on older versions of the console game, you'll be limited to, I believe, nine tiles is the max. So um, you can go out to about 25 tiles uh, on this one uh, in the remastered version. So that's we'll probably be utilizing those. We'll see where the kind of map takes us and everything. We're also going to be able to look here at our future planning. So you kind of want to like plan out where you're going to be going with your tiles. Um, you know, again, since you have to buy one always connected, it's good to know kind of future planning. So for example, for us, you know, if you ever want to do some really good water and kind of different transit options off of here to connect it to the ocean, we're going to gonna go, we'll, we'll call that uh, north. So we would go north to progress that way. I kind of personally see us building more high density, bigger city kind of vibes over this way with some more commercial um, connections and industrial connections with the waterfront. Then I think this way we're going to go more industrial, hooking up to these ore and oil reserve fields 
and be able to build out our industry uh, DLC kind of industrial areas in those zones. So we're probably gonna go a little bit north. Again, we'll call them this north, north and south here. And then east and west will be kind of the sprawl of everything. I think that's kind of the best plan. This is a good way just to kind of start to know where you're kind of headed. You don't have to like stick to this, but it's good to have an idea of where you wanna go with the direction of your city when you're starting out. Here we are at the entrance of our city. Uh, this map has provided a really awesome interchange kind of starting out. Again, we don't have access to that area yet. So all we can do is kind of play off of this incoming connection to our other regions where it goes off in the distance and connects to you know, other worlds that we can't see. When you start the game, you'll notice everything is grayed out. In the bottom left, basically, we have to put a road down. Again, every, all the road types are unlocked. And some of these you can see here when it pops over, there's certain ones that require certain populations and different milestones to be able to unlock those. But by default, all you need to do is place a road down. We're just gonna place one down here and you'll notice at least a few other options open up right away. That's just the kind of the game's way of showing you, hey, place down your first road and then get that going. So we're actually gonna delete that right away. We just needed to place that down to get some our initial roads. So there's different ways to start your city. Um, a lot of people can, you know, sometimes do, do a roundabout off of this. I've seen people kind of just go to a straight T. For us, we're gonna be building a lot of our starting area somewhere kind of over in this re like part of the region, part of our tile. I think it makes more sense for us to build out this area. Can you imagine, um, you know, if a town was just starting out, it might be near this rail line, near this water source. This would be kind of further inland where it really wouldn't make sense. You kind of have to like imagine that a little bit, obviously with this giant interchange here, that wouldn't make sense for our small town right away. But, you know, we can just kind of imagine it looks like this. And, you know, you would kind of come in over here. A lot of the population is gonna live in this area. So in this case, we're just gonna basically build out just the one long road over here to connect us to this area. One thing uh, to show kind of these different guides, that is all connected down here with the toggle snapping. So if you open up this menu, you can kind of see different guides. So if you, you know if you turn them all off, you'll see just free form. There's no guides, no snapping. Say you do the grid, this will snap to different parts of the grid. If you do like, you know, angles, it will snap to different angles. And then the guidelines is the one that shows you the guidelines connected to other roads. Uh, and other different uh, networks. So basically what we can kind of do here, we kind of have to eyeball it a little bit, but basically we want to find this middle part of this guideline here. And this is about 10 units away. So you'll see right there that 10 U shows up. It also shows up at the five point. So if you go less than five units, it's not there. As soon as you hit five, you'll see the 10 mark. Also note that precision engineering is here on PC and it's also built into the remastered version of the console, console experience. So if you're playing the older versions, you'd have to just go off that construction cost. You can kind of say, hey, 200 is five and then up to 400 cost is the full 10. But we're kind of fortunate enough in PC and the remastered version that we can kind of see that units, which helps a little bit. So starting at 10 units, we're gonna find this middle mark. And like I mentioned, we're just gonna go straight. We're gonna go out about 30 units or 20 units here. Just kind of find what we think is right about that middle. So that kind of gives us a good mark. You'll notice we're not actually using any of these bigger, wider four lane roads just yet. We're gonna think of that expansion later down the line, but we really don't need that yet. Just the cost. Every road you'll see here, if you hover it, has a cost and an upkeep. There's no point of spending us, um, we only start out with our 60 or $70,000 to begin. So there's no point of wasting money away from that until we're kind of making some money. You'll also notice that now that we place the road, we actually are you now losing $2 a week over the upkeep of that cost. So we kind of want to pause it here while we're getting things set up so we don't lose money. Now from there, after we made our road, we're going to connect it with this highway connection. So we're going to go out five. Uh, we're going to use our curved road tool. So from the straight road, there's a curved road. We're going to do our two way, two lane, one way roads. We're going to go out five, click. So now we have a snapping point to that five. And now we're going to hook into this road. Kind of get a nice little curve here. We're going to do the same on the other one. And now we have a nice connection. You'll notice, though, it's giving this little uh, icon basically saying that that connection is actually wrong because you'll notice the one ways are going both into the city. We need one going out. So to do that, we switch to our upgrade tool and then you can right click, switch the directions. Um, if you also would hypothetically want to change the road type, if you pick a different road and click a node, that's how you can update that road type as well. So now that we have the start of our kind of like main street here, we'll call it, or kind of our entrance to our city, we're going to bring this all the way down to the rail line. We're going to connect that here. So now we have just one nice straight shot from our uh, connection from the highway all the way to the rail line. We're going to bring it a little bit further and we're going to basically go to this other connection here. So we're going to go out maybe 30 more units. We're going to switch to a curved road. We're going to make sure our road guidelines is on. We're gonna find a good snapping point. For us, it's gonna be this node here. So kind of see where it lights up. It means it's gonna be a good, clean connection to that node. So you'll see there, I have a nice curve, nice gentle curve. So we're gonna go just a bit, 
a little bit past 10 units here and then end here. We'll end with just a little small little T, uh, little T off. And that basically is going to signify, I think later down, we're going to have the road kind of follow this train track over to our industrial area over here. So for now, we'll just kind of dead end it there. That's not a big deal. I also imagine our city kind of having maybe our our first citizens in town kind of in this area, you know, I, I kind of imagine them kind of wanting to be near some nice water. You know, we'll have some industrial over here closer to the railroads. But I feel like I would see people really kind of living off in this kind of forestry area a little bit um, near some water, kind of a nice mountain view. So I think that's what we're going to the direction we're going to take it. We're going to find a good little spot right here to take this road off into that distance. So taking that, we're going to just go down. How many units is that? That's 10 units down from the railroad. We're going to bring that just all the way over here. Nice. So we have a nice straight road off of that. We're going to do the same on the other side. So going 10 units off of that, find that little spot here. Where is that at? Right here. I think that's right. Yeah, 10. We're going to go straight over. And you'll notice we kind of got some weird um, kind of effect with the zoning. So we can fix that really easily. Basically, what we just want to do is delete this road. And then we'll have a nice clean connection. Then we'll just remake that. That'll clean it up. So that usually happens where there's different terrain or sometimes it's the road guidelines. So if you ever see stuff like that, sometimes just remaking the road will get you a better a grid for these uh, squares for your zoning squares. Um, so just make note of that if you ever see that. We're also gonna go a little bit this way. So we'll go about 15 units this way. Same with the side. So now so we have a nice clean grid. We'll kind of go out this way. So we have our two kind of starter areas going out. Now off of these kind of two main roads, we're gonna switch over to our uh, cheaper and uh, more efficient gravel roads to start. So I personally like to do a 20 by 12 or a 12 by 12 grid, meaning I like to go out about 20 spaces. So here's 20, you go up by 12 and then you know over by 20. So, or sometimes I like to also do the 12 by 12. It just kind of depends. No specific reason other than I like the look of the spacing. It also kind of gives you room for if you want to cut it in half, you still have the, the max four um, tiles on each side for zoning. You can also split it. It's good for like little detail in the middle, pathways, etc. I just personally have found that that's my kind of chosen path. So whether it's a mix of the 12 by 12 or the 20 by 12, I got a weird connection here. Let's see if we can fix that. We also have about $50,000 left. And with that, we want to start thinking about our city services. So to start, the biggest two concerns we have is both power and water. So if you click on either one, it's going to switch the overlay to those relative sections. But if you always want to ever go up to your info views in the top left, you can find them that way as well. There's other useful info views in here that we're going to see later on and talk about. But for now, the two kind of importance is water and electricity. So obviously we have nothing for electricity. So it's at zero and water, same. So we need to place those down. And those are going to be our first two costly uh, expenses that we need to account for our 50 grand for. So to start, I like to just use the power plant, the coal power plant, kind of kick it off using that. I'm just going to place that over here in kind of our industrial area is going to be. And then for our water, I like to use the inland water treatment to kind of clean up our water for the outflow our poop water, as some would like to call it. And then what we want to do is we want to be able to pull in clean water, which we're going to go over here to this little water stream. And in this view, these arrows basically mean the flow of water. So implying that, you know, if you were using an outflow of your poop water and your clean, you wouldn't want to put this downstream of your bad water because you'll cause pollution, get people sick. So you always want to make sure you're pulling in clean water or you can kind of cause some problems. So we're going to place that there. You'll notice uh, there has no power to it. So there's a few things we could do. We could use our power line tool and bring power all the way over there. But I'm actually going to opt into just having its own little power source. Nice little green wind turbine. So we can place that there. Now it has its own power source to fuel it. And after our water is put down, we now need to put some pipes down and uh, connect those connections. You'll see that's what that's talking about is it's a lack of connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that. We're going to bring that to our main road over here. And then I like to follow the pathway underneath the road. If you follow the YouTuber City Planner Plays, he has a fun bit about uh, place the place the pipes under the roads where they belong. And I completely agree with him. So it's one thing I feel like he's really contributed to the, the city's community. I feel like he got a lot of people on board with that. So if you uh, don't know him, he's a great YouTuber. Definitely check him out. So I'm going to turn off all of our snapping just so we can kind of follow the road here in a nice clean way. I'm going to bring this up here. You'll notice this is now showing where there's access to water. So we definitely want to cook it up to our, our dirty water. So we're going to hook that in now. Here, a little click. Nice. So now if we were to press play temporarily for a quick second, 
you would see that all of our water would jump up, start to flow, and then we'd have both of those. And we also have our power. So we're gonna have to bring those uh, pipes down further to our other parts of our city, but for now, we got that hooked up. So let's get just kind of some more pipes in here. So from there, really, we technically have everything we need. We have power and we have water. But obviously the biggest thing is no one's gonna come zone yet, or no one's gonna come live in our city yet until we do some zoning. So from there, if we own up, open up our zoning tab, you'll see there's different colors here. Basically, these are our low residential, low density commercial, and our industrial zones for people to come move in, whether it's where they live, where they shop, where they have jobs. So later down, you'll get higher density, um, you know, for like downtowns, offices, for, you know, uh, for educated citizens, stuff like that. But for now, you start out the game with just these simple three, uh, what we call RCI, uh, our RCI demand. So with that in mind, what we want to do is kind of place down some road networks here um, before we place any of our zoning down so we have a kind of an idea of where things are going to be. So I think what we'll do is we'll bring this road down a little bit. Let's turn our snapping back on. Let's go down about 40 meters here. Uh, and you know what? Let's actually make this little loop a nice paved road. And then the rest will kind of be these dirt paths off of that. And then um, I think from here, again, following our our kind of our little grid that we kind of have, we're going to go out to 20. So that's about here. Go down by 12. So yeah, 20 by 12. We're going to bring that back over to this. We're going to go another out 20 by 12. And then this will be a simple 12 by 12 connection. It's nice. And this one, I think we're going to go out by 20, up by 12, out by 20, up by 12, out by 20, up by 12. And you can kind of break this up however you want. So you could do a 20 by, let's do a 20 by 20. We could have like a bigger park there or something. So you, know, you can switch it up. I think even though we are using a grid system here, um, don't have, you don't have to stick to it all the time. Like I think that helps break up your city. You get too formulaic about your grid, it can start to look a little bit uh, boring. So we wanna make sure we're still adding some spice of life to our city too. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of do, do sometimes pick uh, things you wanna do. You might break the grid a little bit. So here we might, do a 20 by 20 and split the difference here. It's kind of nice. And then I think for this, what we'll do is, where does that kind of hit that? So we can bring this one out. And then what we can do is use that curve tool, find that snapping point, and then bring that back in. That kind of that way connect over here. And then I think from here, we'll just end up like another 12 by 12 by 20 by 12. We'll cut this little road off here. We're at about five grand left. We're gonna need to place down some more water pipes. We're gonna have some problems there. Let's put down some water pipes. Perfect, and then a little bit more with our last little bit of money here, as far as we can go. Okay, cool. So we have enough little area covered um, that should be fine. Um, we'll kind of extend those out when we get some more money flowing here. So right now we only have 30 bucks left, which is totally fine. But now we're gonna to start to place our, our zoning. So. Around our industrial area, like I mentioned, we're going to have a mix of industrial. We're going to have a little bit of businesses here, of commercial, just for some goods to be sold, kind of for people going to work, leaving work. That makes sense to have a little bit of commercial there. And then again, this is kind of our main street. So I think most of this is going to be our kind of main corridor for commercial. So you can just, um, when you're placing down your zoning, there's kind of different options. You can do the fill method. You can do the marquee, which is what I prefer. You can do like kind of a paint by numbers style here, or you can kind of do a larger paint by numbers kind of style. I personally like to use the marquee. I think it's a little more precise. And just note that the biggest a building can get, at least in vanilla for zoning is four by four. So that's kind of the largest at its top tier we'll kind of come into and can zone into. What you'll notice though, is that you don't have to do that. So like, I think that's common, sometimes common mistake. You feel like you have to kind of just fill this all out. But what you can do is also is kind of be a little more formulaic about how you place things. So you can kind of do a mix. So for example, we can kind of break this up. Maybe where this road crosses, kind of cut that out. You know, we can say here, we want certain types of buildings, like smaller buildings to kind of come in. So we might do, I don't know, let's say a, a four by three or a three by three here. Um, maybe in here we'll do a three by four. Maybe yeah, just a small little kind of a four by two. Then we'll leave one big four by four over here. Same with this. We might take out that, make it all three, and then kind of just do different little pockets of different sizes. 
it just gives you some variety. You kind of see, you can visualize it there. Kind of different types of buildings will spawn into those areas. So kind of is a nice way to just kind of help give you some different shapes and break it up so it's not just a long line of of one type of type of thing. And also different types of buildings will spawn in there, of course, uh, based on the size. Now that we're putting down our residential, we're gonna think about we're gonna think about a few things. We wanna think about eventually this road is probably gonna be a four lane. Both of these kind of main roads are probably gonna be four lane. So we don't wanna zone necessarily too close to this area. Assuming that needs to like upgrade later. We don't wanna kick people out of their houses when that happens. So we're gonna bring it down here and start um, about two, two little boxes off of that. So that way people later aren't being kicked out of their homes um, when those roads get expanded. And you also notice if you were to blanketly um, zone this, these wouldn't, these two would never, um, since it's past the four on this side, past the four on this side, um, you will never get zoning there in those two spots because it's not connected to the road here. So just be aware sometimes when you hit these little pockets, nothing's gonna zone in those until it's actually connected to a road and not, and it has, you know, before the four, the four tiles here. So it's also, while we're looking at these things, you can also use different views to kind of overlay while you're looking here. So we'll make sure we're only going to zone areas that have water. So that way we're not zoning areas where they're going to complain about water right away. So we'll just zone all this. And you know, I kind of mentioned that earlier. Let's actually fix the zoning here. Again, because we're gonna probably upgrade this later, let's bring this two off of that. And we'll do it on this side as well, take that off. So that way when this gets upgraded later, it's not gonna break anything. This side I'm not as worried about on the industrial. That's kind of the type of zoning that I don't really mind as much about breaking their, making them move. It's the, the people's homes that I kind of get a little more worried about. Great, so now we have some good zoning. We have our coverage. I think we're ready to press play and start making some money. Um, we're gonna be in the red a little bit to start, which is totally fine. Um, we're gonna start making money as soon as people start uh, start to zone in. But to be in the game, I think it's okay. And technically, if you were to get, I think, negative $25,000 to start, you will get a default loan from the game to kind of help you with, I think, a 50K loan. So you can utilize that if you need to, if you really do mess up at the start, if you're not completely out of luck. Uh, it'll bail you out once like that. For now, let's just kind of get people zoned in. We're gonna start to see people come and start to join. We're gonna go to three speed here. We can kind of control the different acceleration of time. We're gonna wait for people to start moving to our city. Houses are gonna start to be built. As you notice here, people are popping in. They're not gonna have power right away. Um, you'll notice here, if we go to our power grid, that's not connected yet. So we just have to have a few more buildings fill in and then that power will get drawn at this area. It just kind of takes a second. Sometimes uh, we'll complain about it. We kind of ran into money before we could build a small little connection there. That's okay. There we go. Now the bridge connection. So all this place doesn't have power now. We have all the people moving in and this is perfect. One thing I forgot to set up is uh, one thing you can do is when you click on a road through this traffic routes, so click on a road, you can make this a priority road, meaning this is kind of like our main street, right? So it's our priority road. Same with this one and same with this one. Basically what that does is when you go to your junctions, it will automate, automatically make these roads from traffic lights to stop signs. We can kind of clean it up a little bit here. Basically just means that they'll prioritize this road over these kind of like smaller roads for the speed that they're going. Helps just kind of the game calculate some of the stuff. There's mods out there that make traffic a little bit more manageable, but for now we'll just deal with the base game, which is basically controlling stop signs, um, turning them to either yields or stops, and then also stop lights. For now, this makes sense to kind of prioritize our main road here. And with that, we already quickly hit our first milestone, Little Hamlet. So with there, we unlock taxes. We can take out a loan if we need one. We now have new services of garbage, healthcare, and education. And then here's all the buildings that we unlocked with that. So as you saw before, our first services we only had to worry about were power and water. Now that we've unlocked these services, these are things that people complain about now if they don't get serviced right away. So such as garbage will start to back up, their healthcare can decline, or they may not become educated. So we need to kind of handle those pretty quickly off the bat, just so people kind of don't complain, but just note that those services don't really exist until you unlock them in this vanilla playthrough. 
one thing I want to set up before we get into building, while this kind of zones in, is we now have access to our taxes. So I can't really tell you why it's just been like this ever since the game started, but basically the, the magic number is 12. <laughs> I don't really know the, the what's or why's, but set these to 12. When, when, when we unlock the, unlock the other densities, we'll set those to 12 as well. But for whatever reason, that's kind of the number where people don't complain. You can go really high, they're obviously gonna complain and leave. You can go really low and you won't make as much money. It's just, it's 12. That's, that's the meaning of life apparently in this world. So we'll leave it at 12 and set it and forget it. Like I said, we're starting to make a few bucks. We have about 14 grand in the, the bank. We can at least put down, I think the most important for sure would be a, get a landfill going just to get some garbage flow. We're gonna pop that right in over here. And as I mentioned before, I'm using a few visual mods. This is just a basic one for, I don't like the vanilla cars personally. So I have custom cars and different vehicle types. You might notice that um, as the playthrough comes through. So one of them is just with the custom vehicles I like to set random. So you might not see that in your version of the game, obviously without any mods, but it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. Just purely cosmetic. You'll notice me set that for these custom vehicles. We're going to switch up to two speed just so we can get a little bit more money flow. And I think we have enough for a small little medical clinic or a school. I think let's opt in to first get a med clinic down. Let's grab a small one and then off of this main road, again, assuming there's gonna be main traffic off of this, let's kind of put this right off of here, maybe like one tile away. So this front has room to upgrade. We don't have to move this later. We're gonna place that right there. It's a nice little, nice little hospital kind of right off the main road. The next two things we need to do is get education down. We have our, our health down. So our next service for sure is me education, which we need about, looks like about 10 grand. Okay, so we can wait a minute. We can always take out a loan. I personally don't like to take out loans just because the, the interest cost are there. So in this case, we're making money. We just need to wait a minute. There's no point of rushing it. Um, so we'll go to three speed just to get that money, but there's no point of taking out a loan just yet for that especially when we're making money. So it'll just take a second. We'll get to the 10 grand that we need. And with that, we quickly hit our next milestone. Some of these first few uh, really kind of jump in pretty quick as you've seen. Um, so we now hit our worthy village, 950 population. We technically can purchase another tile if we want to. We unlock features like districts, policies, uh, we can get a second loan, district specializations, service or pro services pro policies. And um, the biggest ones, our new services are emergency, so fire, and police and unique buildings. Some other stuff that we unlock, we'll kind of get through that. We're at 28,000 right now. I think our most important really is we need school, education, fire, and police. So let's first plop down, let's get 12,000. Let's get our firehouse down. I'm gonna put that near our industrial area. And again, just a little mod change for you. And then the other one is we're gonna get a police station down which is this one, it's gonna cost us 12,000 as well. Let's put that kind of over on this area, maybe off of the main street here. Yeah, right, yeah, right here. Good little spot for it. And then our last little bit is, now that those services are covered, we're really gonna to need to get some money for, uh, let me confirm real fast. Yeah, uh, we have those covered. We just need to get some education going. Your businesses will probably start to complain soon that they don't have educated workers and that's that's okay, but we really do need to start to get that covered. So great, now that we have some money, let's put down our elementary school. Let's just find a fill this little spot up here. Since someone decided to move over here, we'll, we'll place our first school kind of right off of that main road near that school. People will definitely want to move in now. I'll be good for that area. We also have the ability now to do policies. So these are basically blanket policies you can put through your whole city. So right now we could do power usage, just basically a safe power smoke detectors, which would give us a little bit of upkeep charge there, but reduce the risk of fire. I'm not gonna worry about those just yet. Also note that we also have the access to districts now. So what you can do is paint districts if you wanted to. So say you wanted to paint this area. And kind of have a little snapping there. This will create a nice little district. And then from there, what you can technically do is both different styles, and not all these apply to every type of building, but you can also then do district um, policies. So there you can have a policy. If only this area you want to have smoke detectors, hypothetically, you can do that there. You don't have to necessarily do blanket uh, policies if you don't want to. We're going to get rid of that for now. Um, I'm not always the best at utilizing districts, but there'll be a place for it. And we'll kind of go over that when we when we make a few. So now that we have, um, we're kind of on our way to basically almost to our next milestone, about to hit that here shortly. 
Um, they'll probably pop up any second. Let's go over to our, our info views and just check out where we're at for our, for our basic needs, right? Like, oh, and we just hit that. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to our info, view, info views here in a second. So we just hit Tiny Town. Um, this is kind of the biggest milestone, I think, is where you now have stuff like parks, industrial, lots of new services we can access, lots of new policies, tons of different road types, lots of different parks. And then you also start to get to detailing. You get landscaping, different things like that. I'll kind of go over all these tabs here in a second. We also have unique buildings now that we can start to go for and try to unlock. Those are just achievements. So yeah, that's good. So before we dive into that, we also have some good money now. We have 36,000. Just double check our services as our city's building just to make sure you know we're good on power, doing good on water. How's our pollution's kind of stuck in that area, which is totally great. Unemployment's at 14%. It's not terrible. Could be a little bit better. We can kind of work on that. Fire safety is good. Our police. Cool. So there's no immediate uh, services that need our attention. So we can kind of focus on expansion at this point. A few different things. Now that we have parks, I do want to put in, first things first, um, when you open up certain views, you'll notice that it immediately goes to the info view. You can always go up here and turn that off and just see if you want to place things without that extra like view. So let's do a let's do a small well I'll do a small playground. Put that next to the school. I feel like it makes sense to have a little playground next to the school. What you can also do is in one of the content creator packs here. Or actually it might be in the base game now. You can have access to parking lots. So we can put a small little parking lot next to our school so people have a place to park. Although, um, I'm not going to put it there because when that street upgrades, it's going to clash with that. So we won't worry about that for now. Or you can put it actually over here. We'll just do that. We'll do a little. Well, well let's see here. Let's actually just relocate these. Let's quickly temporarily put that over there. We're going to move the parking right next to it. And then we're going to put it back over here. Costs a little few bucks, but it makes a little more sense to have the parking in between the two. And then we'll just look at the zoning here. Yeah, this will be fine to have a little residential there. Great. We also now have the ability to do paths. So here, this is really useful for getting people out of their cars. If we give them bike lanes, different biking paths. They're going to be less likely to use their car for things, which is super awesome to get them off the road, help with our road networks. Let's bring in just a few biking networks around here. We're going to have a few little spots. Let's turn off road guidelines for this. We have a few different areas here where people can bike. You'll see people start to utilize this. This will be useful. There you go. So spots like this. People want a bike. That's kind of nice too. It kind of parallels to the uh, train track. It's kind of a nice way to do it. Um, I like that kind of setup there. Maybe a few of these we can kind of have little neighborhood paths that cut through the roads. Makes people move, but that's okay. Am I right with pe making people move for for some nice little upgrades like this? Sometimes you gotta fix the zoning in these little spots, and that's also okay. So let's do that so the zoning comes back in. This kind of helps clear out some of the zoning to fix that when those come through. We also have the ability now to place down different trees, assets, fauna, stuff like that. Really nice to kind of add more life to your city. So maybe we can do is kind of have a nice little, I don't know, a little boulder feature over here. This might be kind of a nice thing. Let's see how this looks. Try to put a little bit off of the road so we have room for the upgrade. Yeah, something, I don't know, just something if you're driving in, have something interesting than looking at the industrial areas. You might look at this nice, look at these nice rock. And we can also place down maybe a small little park or something, or a parking lot. It might be nice like a municipal parking lot or something. Put that right, yeah, right there. Just kind of near the parking. That's nice. 
also place down a few other parks. It really helps the um, the cost of our um, the wealth of our land to have parks down. So we want to be able to have access to parks because who doesn't love a good park near them? So we'll put a few other parks down over in this area over here. Uh, maybe we could do we have quite a bit of money. Maybe we could put down as like a nice little library over here. This would be kind of cool. We'll take out some of these buildings. That's fine. Move those buildings. Have a nice nice little library. And then next to the library, we could have a, have a nice large playground. This will be nice. Yeah, something like that. So people have a place to go to the park and then go to the library. It also kind of helps break up. They, they, they can get education from the, the library, of course. So nice way for people to go over here if they want to break away from going to school. Also start to kind of give a little more life to our main street. I think it's kind of a nice way of having like, you know, it's a really nice, really nice library we have set up over here. I like the look of that. Yeah, why don't we do a small little expansion? So we're gonna take our dirt roads again for the cost effectiveness. Let's build out some more zoning down here. But I'm a 12 over by 20. And we're gonna go up by 12. We're just gonna dead end there. We have 12. Oh. 12 by 20. This one we're gonna go a little bit longer zone. We're gonna go all the way to this. So it's 32 and up. That's fine. Have a little longer zone there. I also kind of want to follow the contour. So in your info panels, you can kind of see here the terrain heights. Kind of see there's a little bit of a hill here. What we want to do is we kind of want to follow that terrain. So it's another nice way of, of making your city look a little more organic and nice is to follow these kind of terrain lines. So what we're going to do is just using our freeform tool, we're going to find just kind of this, kind of this, this uh, level spot right here. We're going to start to make a road. And this one, we're not going to follow any guidelines. We'll take those off. We're just going to kind of follow this around the bend here. Kind of make a more natural curve around this. Kind of bring this back up. Yeah. Okay. And just for purposes of this, let's bring our main road back over all the way down here. And then our curve tool. What we can do is, uh, let's see, where's a, where's a good snapping node here? It's over here. You take it off of this. So this node here, let's get that. And then, yeah, there we go. Make a nice little curve here. So now we have a nice little curve. This will probably be a little more wealthy part of town. A little closer to the water. Might even do one more. What we can do is um, a landscaping tools here that we have. We have some soil availability. We can always kind of bring this out a little bit. So we're gonna use the, the level terrain by first clicking the height we want it to be at. Kind of pushing this out. You'll notice the terrain gets pushed out a little bit more. So we'll try our best to level this level this out a little bit more for, for people living moving in. That's great. And then now let's also make sure this connects over here. Let's do is bring that right over. And then maybe we'll bring one more. Yeah, like that. Nice. Don't like that connection. Let's go down. This one we'll just kind of cut over and then maybe make a connection right here. It's kind of nice. It's kind of something to break up the grid a little bit there. We'll just kind of end it in a little cul-de-sac there. Yeah, so that way we don't embark on that zoning area here. Cool, let's kind of keep extending this grid over a little bit. So 20 by 12. Great, we have a few different connections here. Um, Oh, we're out of money. Okay. Cool. It's great. So that's nice little connections we have. A few little dead ends. Gives us a little bit more zoning options over there. We'll have to put some pipes under there here shortly. So we're gonna get our reserves money back back. Uh, reserve money back up here. Let's wait for that to put on three speed and get some money flowing. We do have only our commercial over here, so why don't we put a few little pieces of commercial right in here? Kind of think of it like corner stores, whatever it might be. Put a few pieces of commercial there, a little bit closer to their homes. Again, we don't want them to always have to go all the way up here for commercial. So we'll put a few more little bits of commercial around here. Kind of give them some more options. Cool, got some more money. Oh, it looks like we're having a power issue. Cool. So we're teetering on a little bit lower power. 
So why don't we also pop down another, we don't have the money for it. What we can do is if we don't have the money for it, so we can temporarily go to our, our budget tab and then we can bring up the electricity a little bit, basically add a little more budget, which gives a little more electricity. So you'll see this go up. So just temporarily, we'll kind of increase our budget to, to get that power coming through. So it'll be great. And then once that, we have the money here, we'll build another power plant. I think we need about 30,000, if I remember correctly. Uh, 19,000, okay, cool. So let's let that zone in and get some money. We can build that second power plant. While the game kind of runs, you know, you kind of do have to kind of watch your money a little bit, but don't forget to also just take sight in how awesome the game is, as visually as it looks, you know? Watching your Sims move around the city, Check out different angles. Kind of may even go in the life the day of. We got Spider-Man here. That's right. As you'd expect, Spider-Man's going to work. A few little Easter eggs like that I have for citizens. Kind of funny. See if you uh, catch any of those. Maybe leave a comment or uh, maybe an emoji or something. The interaction helps the video a ton. Kind of a fun way if you catch any of those. A nice way just to enjoy the game sometimes too, right? I really just want to chill out. I'm gonna watch it. Sometimes you don't have to be at three speed. Watch it one speed. You don't have to always be focused on building. You can always admire the fact that there's basically Panda Express across the street from each other. That's one of my favorite bits. Tennies, the Denny's, next to the IHOP, basically Pancake Wars. You know, admire that kind of fun stuff. Kind of fun to kind of start to really look at the details of your city living. I feel like that kind of makes it more fun. Especially early on, you'll notice that certain assets are a little more cheesy than others in City Skylines, because early on the game was kind of meant to be a little more silly. Um, you know, you have funny things like the little chirp, you know, kind of ode to Twitter, other little fun things. There's some little funny little interactions sometimes, so don't 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 lose sight of that stuff. Kind of makes it a little more fun sometimes when you notice these little funny things. So now we can place another power plant. We're gonna put that just right here next to the other one. And do note, as we kind of put the economy budget up, you can also lower it. So if you notice that you're over, you know, because this costs us money. So if you notice you're way over like this, you can micromanage this a little bit more. You can bring this down, kind of find that sweet spot. Let's figure, find it, maybe a little bit more. Nope, I'll let it go, whatever it might be. So you can micromanage that. I'm just gonna put it back to 100, but you can hypothetically micromanage that um, that excess power. We're gonna immediately zone this stuff, so we're gonna need that power. Put a nice little, I mean, attract people over here. We're gonna put in a nice little dog park. It's gonna be kind of nice, and maybe a little small playground. Just two little, two little nice little areas for people to come. Let's put this on the same road. Yeah, two little spots for people to kind of come by. I don't know why they'd be mad about that. Oh, I think because they moved it, so it like goes away and comes back. I'm about to say, why would you be mad about a dog park? And what we also should do is probably bring this other road. Let's upgrade this mid road, and let's bring this across to. That's a good length. We went about, how far was that? 52. So let's go to this right here. Have one more connection here, just so another way for people to cross without having to always come to these two junctions to cross. It's useful. And we'll send our pipes to cover that zone if we ever end up zoning over there. What other kind of things we can use here? Um, I wanna look and you know, we have a basketball court. Maybe that would be nice right in this little pocket here. It's a nice little spot. People like that it might be a little good spot. You kind of find these little pockets. Maybe, especially in like weird little areas like this, this is a great place to throw a park down. Especially a pre-made park. So my favorite assets. We're playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. We've got people cheering. And looks like with that, we hit our goal of the video. Boomtown. So we've unlocked a ton of new services, mainly public transportation, airport area, another, uh, another area that we can unlock if you want to purchase that new policies lots of different road types and some other buildings so this is awesome so i can't believe we really zoomed through that first uh, few goals which is awesome i think what we're going to do now to end this video is we're going to have just kind of some i'm going to put some save up a few more dollars i'm going to put some more zones down sorry i'm going to do some more detailing some different zones different areas maybe a few parks i think that'd be a good way to end this fantastic all right i hope that Oh yeah, I should go over the RCI meter as well. Um, this is what the, down here, these different colors, basically. Um, it's not super clear. I think if by a quick glance, you might look and say, oh, I need more residential, or I need less residential, less commercial, more industrial. It's not necessarily that black and white. The game doesn't do the best job of explaining this, but basically the green is your residential demand. So if it's high, you need more workers. Um, if it's low, you're oversupplied of workers. 
The blue is a mix of both visitor slots and the worker to uh, population ratio. The orange is represents unemployment. So that's not necessarily industrial. It could mean commercial as well, but you'll notice if you click on that and then go to your population that we have a high unemployment right now. So that's why that skyrocketed up. Really what you wanna do is keep a balance of those in the middle. You don't want any of those too high spiking or too low. I'm gonna to link to a video in the description of a, of a really good, more detailed view of how RCI and different problems works. But for now, um, just think of it, yeah. Uh, again, the we want, you know, more or less residential. This one could be visitor spaces as well. And then this is unemployment. So it might be a little bit confusing, but helps to helps to better know how the game is actually using those meters. So we're starting to balance out a little bit. We'll get a little more balance before the end of the video. And yeah, I think that wraps up our first kickoff episode of Vanilla Vista. Thank you so much for joining me on the city building adventure. I hope you enjoyed watching the pro progress of our city grow, and I hope you gain some inspiration for your own creations. I want to express my heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you, my amazing pizza dog friends, for your support, your comments, your likes, your engagement means the world to me and keeps me motivated to bring you more and more content. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, join me on Discord. It's the perfect place to connect with fellow city builders, share screenshots, ask questions, exchange tips and ideas, and get ready for the next episode of Vanilla Vista, where we'll be tackling some more major city expansion projects. We'll be unlocking new milestones, managing some transportation systems, and venturing into new areas of development. You won't want to miss it. And once again, I am ZReezy. Thank you for being a part of this incredible journey. Until next time, keep building, keep innovating, and keep exploring the endless possibilities of city skylines.